Okay, guys, so the press secretary, who we all know, diversity hire, who uh, is obviously underqualified. I love it how she likes to spin it, how it's, um, you know, Democrats, when they say something racist, they take accountability and all this other stuff. I can name ample times where Democrats throughout history have said racial things and they're never held accountable, both black and white. But uh, let's go ahead and watch this little clip. And, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. The difference between Democrats and, and MAGA Republicans, when a Democrat says something racist or anti-Semitic, we would, we, we hold them. We hold Democrats accountable. When a MAGA Republican says something uh, racist and, or anti-Semitic, they are embraced by cheery crowds and become celebrated and sought after endorsements. You got more questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump and you ain't black. When he... The minute I heard that and not even seeing Charlemagne the God say something to, to that man, Tell him to sew his roll down. I'm like, I knew he was a bitch. I knew he was a fucking bitch. How you let some white man, bruh, an old one at that, put you in your place like that? You swear to God, you're the man and all this other crap, but you let a white man on your show tell this to your face. Yeah, you you the king, all right. You the king. More like a bitch. Democrat says something racist or anti-Semitic. We hold Democrats accountable. This is not going to be the country of white people. When a Democrat says something racist, or and they wonder why Ye came out with a what? White Lives Matter shirt. These types of women like that, I don't like it. Look, look, or I think I've told you guys a story once. So on Hinge, um, on Hinge, someone had asked me a very controversial question and it was about, uh, well, I had responded. It was actually one of Hinge questions so that we can, you know, be matched more appropriately or with people who have our values and views on things. So I answer this question. I'm like the most controversial, um, view that I have in my, in my, in my opinion is that I think that we need to stop, uh, electing, um, anti-Semitic politicians in our society. And in particular, it was in uh, response to uh, Talita Rashid and um, Ilya Omar. Let me tell you, I had nothing but Jewish guys inside of my um, hinge messenger thanking me, thanking me, thanking me, thanking me, and thanking me, and thanking me, and saying thank you for bringing this up. This is huge. But you know, I never got time to go back and look at it because, like before, I said that I really wasn't getting a lot of people in my inbox and I know mainly why it's because it's stereotypical you know black women they think I'm you know probably like that individual like those individuals but as soon as I mentioned that oh they were all in my all in my inbox and I definitely wanted to in you know you know melt and I definitely wanted to message them back but with work and um you know my responsibilities it got busy so by the time I did come back I was officially banned from hinge for bringing that up, someone literally reported me because I said, I do think that we need to start, we need to stop, um, like electing anti-Semitic racially, um, divisive type candidates into our politicians into our government. It's fucking detrimental and it will rip our country apart. Like that woman, like people like that, like it makes me want to say, unless you are born here in America, you will never ever be elected as politicians. We do it for our freaking president. 
We should do the same with these pol politicians because we brought her over here. We could have left her back in, um, in um, Ethiopia, wherever the fuck she came from, and let her die with all her Muslim um, extremists over there who would have chopped her fucking head off. So, um, so I'm just like, you know, I don't, I don't like her at all. She needs to go. Her and Talita Rashid. Anti-Semitic. We hold Democrats accountable. Our country should be more fearful um, of, of, of white men. And they never, you know, I never, like, where's the outrage? Where's CNN? Where's all, if, if, imagine if a white person said we should be fearful of the black man. Imagine that. And a, this bitch, this fucking politician is allowed to say that? We need to stop electing people simply because of what they look like. We need to start electing people on who they are. This type of individual is the devil. She might look innocent, but there is nothing innocent about that woman. She does nothing but just spark flames and stirs fires. Our country, because they are actually um, causing uh, most of the deaths. All right, guys. So you know, I'm like, I don't even want to like, uh, like this shit just really gets on my nerves when it comes to these types of politicians. The shit that they say is insane. I read this about Trump. But let's go ahead and look at um, the black conservative perspective to speak about this. Um, and like I had made a video the other day about Kanye um, when it comes to Jewish people and what he had said um, in his interview with um, Carl, uh, Tucker Carlson. But um, that's on my Instagram and I'll link that below so you guys can go look at some of those videos. YouTube tends to be really slow with uploading my videos. It'd be like pending for days. Like, I, and I know they are watching my videos and probably shadow banning it. Um, one of my videos actually because of the title uh, and what I was talking about was why I'm a capitalist and not a socialist. Not only did that, did I upload it twice? Uh, yeah, they won't even let it be posted. So these people do not, you can tell the individuals who are on the other side are, they're being editors when they shouldn't be. So you've probably seen silly headlines like this in the mainstream liberal media uh, about Trump and a tweet, I mean a truth that Trump put out about Israel and American Jews. Now, this comes in light of the comments that Kanye West has been making about Jewish people that have bought on calls of anti-Semitism. So Trump puts out this tweet in light of that. And lo and behold, the American mainstream liberal media starts attacking Trump as anti-Semitic. OK, so we're going to read this truth that Trump put out. And you guys let me know if you think that. You know, the one thing I will say is I don't hear this outrage coming out from these news um, um, news publications when it came to Nancy Pelosi literally admitting that immigrants are used um, and we don't need to bring, keep bringing Im immigrants north and trying to just justify why they should be in, in the Florida to pick crops. Like, I don't see anyone calling them out. And, it, and honestly, it goes, it fits the Democratic, you know, it, it fits their subscription, yo. They wanted blacks to pick their crops. The ideology never left. We're just seeing it more and more now because they think we're asleep. That ideology has never left. That party literally was formed because of, the, uh, of a need to fuel our economy. And the only thing they had at the time, which they inherited, by the way, for the British, for those who don't fucking know this, they inherited the slaves from um, the British colonies that actually brought them over here. And their whole thing was to use us as labor in order to fuel the economy, which was the beginnings of America. This has always been the Democrats' party ideology. They're just now being more upfront about it. But let's go. I don't actually, anti- Semitic. So let's read here. No president has done more for Israel than I have. 
Somewhat surprisingly, however, our wonderful evangelicals are far more appreciative of this than the people of the Jewish faith, especially those living in the U.S. Those living in Israel, though, are a different story. Highest approval rating in the world could easily be prime minister. U.S. Jews have got to get their act together and appreciate what they have in Israel, but it's too late. So, geez, um, this to me doesn't sound anti-Semitic as much as it just sounds like Trump saying, look, I feel like Jews in Israel or the people of, of Israel are far more appreciative <laughs> yeah. of the things I have done for Israel as president than Jews are in America. Which is insane. For whatever reason, um, because <laughs> Trump said that Jews have to get their act together, they have extrapolated this to anti-Semitism, right? They said Trump is putting out anti-Semitic comments. I mean, even the Biden administration is co-signing this as the affirmative action <laughs> White House press secretary who pulls the race car. It's like... I love it how he says says the affirmative action <laughs> press secretary. He doesn't really like to call her Kareem, Kareem Jean-Pierre. He says the affirmative action hire. It's just hilarious. All the time, it, it, it's also saying this. Take a look. Hold on. This is a great movie, really by the way. Important that the dynamic. So Donald Trump's race car slash bigotry car. All the time, it, it is also saying this. Take a look. So Donald Trump's comments were anti-Semitic, as you all know, <laughs> and insulting, both to Jews and to our Israeli allies. But let's be clear, for years, for years now, Donald Trump has aligned with extremist and anti-Semitic figures. And it should be, it should be called out, to your point, Darlene, just like we called out our Democratic uh, friends and colleagues last week. And we will condemn and call this. You still haven't called out Nancy Pelosi. You, you forced uh, Mar Nu Nuri Martinez to resign. You should fucking tell Nancy Pelosi to resign. Press Secretary Affirmative Action, Karine Jean-Pierre. As well. So we need to root out anti-Semitism everywhere. It rears its ugly head. We need to call this out. With respect to Israel, our relationship is ironclad and it's rooted in shared values and interests. Donald Trump clearly doesn't understand that either. Oh no, he does. That's why he said that it, the people of Israel are appreciative. It's the ones here in America who aren't. And all of those, if you don't know the history of the Jewish people, I'm sorry. When it comes to Israel, they are a, a, a very small. Uh, they are the minority in that region. If you think about it, they're fucking surrounded by Middle Easterns who are of the Muslim faith. You know. Muslims who literally took their land, land that they were expelled from from years ago. So, you know, when it comes to Israel, I don't give a shit what they do when it comes to protecting their land, the land that they had to take back after it was stolen from them. How, well, basically, by the same people who are now saying, oh my God, you're doing this to us, you're doing this to us. Nah, I don't think so. I'm not, I don't buy into... I do not buy, like, not saying that there probably aren't things that happen over there uh, in which there aren't collateral damage, in which there is collateral damage, okay? I'm not, on, I'm not, on, I'm not trying to justify, justify the collateral damage when it comes to lies on both sides, when it comes to the Palestinians and the Israelis. I'm talking about the ones who would take situations like those um, events to use and to use and abuse to then call out Israel and justify their justify their mission of wanting to um, take Israel over. No, because we all know that there are individuals who will glad gladly want to see Israel burn. So I don't fucking buy it. And if that means giving them all the freaking you know, or at least supporting them um, when it comes to their defenses. And just so, like making sure they have a, th making sure they have the freedom to live um, a life of their choosing and live their way of life without the interference of um, the the Muslim faith that literally is surrounding them in that region. I'm all for it. And if you are white 
black, Hispanic, or whatever, and you don't like me saying this about Israel, well, you can go fuck yourself, okay? You really can. Because you cannot sit here and say that that country who's all by himself, all by themselves, in a region that is surrounded by those who would gladly kill them, I think they need to be a little bit more aggressive than, uh, you know, than just, you know, than aggressive more than usual. That's all I gotta say. But um, I just wanted to look at that little part from uh, the Black Conservative Perspectives um, video. And uh, I, I really did like that beginning and how ironic it was how the affirmative action um, press secretary loves to say how this needs to be called out but and say that um, they do call out individuals. No, you only call out certain people, honestly, based on the color of their skin. You only call them out um, when, it, when it's a beneficial or you get so much outrage from your, um, from your uh, I guess, your constituents. But you don't call everybody out. Let's just put that real right now. You don't call everybody out because we've already seen it. Why the hell is fuck? And, and to be honest, what, um, what's her name? Um, Ilya Omar said, I find that more egregious is more or on the same part or on the same boat or in the same boat as what Nuri, Nuri Martinez said. It's very egregious. She should, she should fucking resign her position immediately. If y'all want to go there.